It's time again for Ham Nation's Show Us Your Project. We have four projects to look at, so let's get going. Titus AB3WX is building himself a gold box around an 8-rack unit portable case, currently housing a ICOM 7100 and a weather radio. And it looks like he's got a power supply in the base. It looks like a drawer. And on the rear, a couple SO239s to hook up the antenna. And it looks like a, some type of rack panel on the top with a voltmeter. And he's got room for future expansion to add another radio or two. And he plans on building a battery box to go along with this to power the rack. Nice work. Bill, G4GHB, built this 1.6 watt 80 meter QRP transmitter about four years ago, but he's got a lot of QRM on 80 meters, so he's decided to modify it to a dual band transmitter for 40 and 60 meters, and he's got it crystalled up for 5.62 and 7.030, the QRP frequencies. He said he's had to rewind the coil, um, change the tuning capacitor a little bit, add a uh, band switch between 40 and 60 meters, the valve is a 61BT that came out of an old post-war oscilloscope that somebody gave him, and it was also used in, in TV sets. So he's on now, 40 and 60 meters CW QRP. Lynn KD9BVG has built himself what he calls a satellite communication center. His challenges were living in a HOA subdivision, and housing all the equipment in a very small ham shack in a corner of their sunroom. The satellite antenna system is built around an M-squared Leo pack mounted on a Glen Martin tower. He's painted a tower and antennas camouflage green so they don't stand out. <laughs> he says he has understanding neighbors. The tower is securely fastened to the earth using screw and anchors. He's conducted a series of tests trying to pull the tower over with a scale and doing some calculations with, with wind loading, and he feels that this will be able to survive, he hopes, a 75-mile-an-hour wind. He has a trench where he's buried all the cables going to the house, and his three-year-old granddaughter is supervising the backfill. He has two SSB preamps mounted on the antennas to give him additional gain. The azimuth and elevation rotors are the Yesu G5500, and he says the antennas have a good view of this guy in most directions, although he is shooting towards some trees in one, in one direction. He's able to work satellite passes down to one to two degrees, so he says it's amazing. Sometimes you just have to try it and see what works. And he uses a KF7 entrance panel with lightning arresters. Uh, he's got three of them in there for the VHF, UHF beams, as well as an NFED uh, wire strung up between a couple trees. He also has lightning arresters on the control cables for the Yesu rotors, and this required a lot of tedious Molex connection and crimping um, installation. So he's, um, he said it was a little difficult to master. He learned a lot from mistakes and was able to master crimping Molex connectors. So the second part of this project is his operating position in his sunroom. He, now, he says he does have a basement area, which has a lot more space, but he wanted the operating position up on the main floor of the house, so his wife allocated him 46 inches of space in the sunroom. So this required minimization thinking. So if you can't go wide, you go tall. So it's all built around a seven-foot-tall Ethan Allen computer desk. In the uh, bottom of the desk, he's got a um, power supply and a Mountain West uh, rig runner. His new VHF UHF rig is the ICOM 9700. He says it's a great radio. He uses a Heil Pro 7 headset with a foot switch. He uses SAT PC32 for his satellite tracking program. And he has an interface to the Yesu rotor using a control box built by EA4TX from Spain, and so that completely automates the antenna pointing. To go along with the IC9700, he has the HF Twin, the ICOM7300, and that gives him a lot of communication power at his fingertips. So he says this all comes down to making new friendships on the radio and meeting up with uh, people that you talk to at your local ham fest. So, outstanding project, Lynn. 
And our last project is from Greg, KO6TH, with an update on his Tesla Roadster radio installation. He says he wanted to do more than just talk. He wanted to add some digital communications to the system. So he found a spot to mount a Raspberry Pi underneath the center console, and he's using this for APRS. He's running Direwolf software along with uh, KA2DDO's YAAC software to provide mapping. He uses a small USB sound card as well as a USB GPS receiver to supply the Pi with its time and location. So it's pretty neat, able to see the map up on the display of the radio. He says the only problem now is whether to call this my car pie or pie a la Roadster. Thanks for the update, Greg. Well, that wraps up another Ham Nation Show Us Your Projects. We all would like to see what you've been working on. So please send them to me, Randy, K7AGE. Send them to hamprojects at twit.tv and we'll get you on Ham Nation. 73 and thanks for the projects.